Joining me now for more is filmmaker and commentator Ami Horowitz. Ami, a political panel on CNN has had an almighty meltdown over a joke made by a conservative commentator, Ryan Gadowski. At, uh, he made the joke towards a pro-Palestinian journalist, Mehdi Hassan. This is a man who calls half the country Nazis, but apparently that's fine. But, but when a conservative makes a joke about a pager going off, uh, let's see the reaction. Let's see the absolute meltdown. If you don't want to be called Nazis, stop no, doing... You're you called an anti-Semite. You're called an anti-Semite more than anyone table. Yeah. Yeah. And people will by sit you. there and... No, by me. I never called you an anti-Semite. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying or saying I, mean, I don't... I'm, I'm a supporter of the Palestinians, so I'm used to it. Yeah, I, well, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. The thing is, is Did that... you just oh, say I should wow. die? You, you should not... No, I Did you just say no. I should be killed? No, no I'm not... Of course, he goes straight into victim mode, interpreting the comment as some sort of a death threat... He did say, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. He didn't want it to explode. And the hysteria continued. All right. Give me one second. Give me one second. And so at this point, I can't This is what we're in now. This is America this. in 2024. Here's what I will say. Forget Here's the racism. I, that's right. It's I should that's die. Right. I didn't that's, say that, that you should said, die. What, is, what does beeper mean? Don't give me a fake. I did not say you should guys, die. Why did you say guys, with my beeper? Me, no, what did you mean? What did you mean by the beeper? So what I said, what did no, you mean no, by the beeper? No, 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 no you didn't. You said, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. Ryan, stop talking. At least have the guts to support your racist comment. Hang on. I'm so sorry. And I will tell you, I don't accept that apology, and you didn't even say it to me. That's fine. I didn't say it to you. That was disgusting. But I can be offended when you don't even say it to me. I'm not Puerto Rican, but I was offended by what he said yesterday. The hyperbole is off the charts, that lone conservative uh, was taken off air and now Army is being banned from CNN. Yeah, first of all, uh, Rita, I sure hope that Rita Panny extended Danzo mix that I saw before is going to make it on air. So I like what I, I like the moves that I saw, Rita. And, and by the way, for my TikTok Gen Z fans out there, I want before I start, I want to say thank you, Beyonce. I don't want to die. All right, moving on. Uh, Mehdi Hassan, yes. Um, why was Mehdi Hassan... Mehdi Hassan is a man, just so we have some context here, right? He was he was fired from MSNBC. He was fired because he had horrible ratings. He was no Rita Panahi when it came to the ratings. That's for sure. That's for certain. But yes, like you alluded to before, prior to that exchange, he went on and said, essentially said, that every Republican... 50% of this country are fascists and Nazis. I would take offense to that. And of course, Godorsky did, because he is one of them. So he was essentially being called a Nazi by this guy. Now, what, what do I think he's guilty of? Okay, it was a lame joke, for sure. It wasn't really appropriate for CNN. Also, but I get where he was coming from. He was upset. It was a heated exchange. And by the way, Mehdi Hassan, not exactly a, a shrinking violet when it comes to attacking his opponents, right? Um, so let's be clear about that. And then, of course, the reaction by CNN, of course, it was over the top, right? They had to come with a mm. statement where they said, hey, we don't accept bigotry. We don't want crossing the line of civility. And that hypocrisy is just so blatant. Uh, like you said, he, he called half the country fascist. That's fine. There's no problem with that. But they lose their minds over that little joke by Tony Hinchcliffe about Puerto Rico. They're still talking about that. And this uh, joke about uh, a beeper going off apparently is the worst thing that's ever happened on CNN. Uh, just on that Puerto Rico joke, uh, which is uh, still... I can't believe I'm still hearing about it. Joe Biden has responded by calling half of America garbage. Or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honourable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Joe isn't really helping Kamala in these moments, is he, um, Amir? Yeah. Do you think he realises that he's doing damage to her cause at times? Or is it just a lucky accident? He has no idea what's happening. Does he, he doesn't realise anything. Come on, Rita, look. Uh, first of all, can I just want one comment? He's the president of the United States. Do you see the framing on that? I mean, who put... Like, it's like literally... He, there's, they got to use Sky News in Australia's tech people. These guys, those guys are first class. It's like he just sat there, no lighting, right? Just no mic, just threw the laptop up. It was horrible. Um, no, he doesn't know anything. And finally, <laughs> Rita, I gotta say, I kind of blame... It's like FaceTiming your great-grandpa. 
Yes. Oh no, great grandpa's much. I'm sure much more technically savvy and competent than than Uncle Joe. Look, Rita. Uh, at this point, I got to blame you for elder abuse. Can you stop it? Can you leave the poor man alone? Look, you could. You just told me what he said. The only reason I have to trust you because I couldn't understand a word he was saying. I listened. I listened to that clip five times. I had to slow it down. I, the guy cannot put a sentence together. It's terrible. Now, mm. look, I, I know he was riffing on the garbage joke, right, by Puerto Rico and, and Hinchcliffe. I mean, look, was it a mistake to bring Hinchcliffe on? Of course it was. But he is an insult comic. That's what he does for a living. That joke was not out of bounds relative what? to what he normally says. This is, in fact, it was kind of tame. Hinchcliffe's kind of what he does for a living. Do I like it? Not particularly, certainly not for an event like that. But at the end of the day, the, beyond the joke itself was watch, oh God, I got so much joy watching the media trying to make this a new cycle, right? They spent an entire week talking about this. They were squeezing so, they're trying to squeeze as much juice from a lemon that was essentially dry, but it was hilarious watching them do it. Yes. This is the party, the Democratic Party, that calls for civility, right? Calling half the country garbage. That's very civil. Thanks, Uncle Joe. Uh, they have tried to get mileage out of this joke. You know what? I actually do like Tony Hinchcliffe. I love his uh, involvement in the Tom Brady roast. That was brutal. That was funny. I don't think it was a mistake. I, I don't see... Latinos are some hypersensitive group that are going to change their vote based on a joke some dude made. It wasn't a joke that Trump uttered. It was from... And George Lopez uh, made even a more offensive joke, arguably, at a Kamala rally just a few days ago, suggesting that all Mexicans are thieves. I didn't see any meltdown after that. Now, I know you've been out there talking to people yourself, Army. You hit the streets with your camera and... Uh, this time you're asking people uh, to explain Kamala's speeches. So you would read out word for word what she has said and see if they could understand it. And you tell me what the hell she's trying to say. Gotcha. Is, okay. it, is it Kamala Harris? <laughs> yes. <laughs> on top of everything else that we know and don't know, yet based on what we've just been able to see, and because we've seen it or not, doesn't mean it just happened. For us, at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present, and to be able to contextualize it, to understand it, where we exist in the history and the moment, as it relates not only the past, but the future. Do you want me to repeat that? <laughs> You did try your best, but the good folk of Malcolm X Boulevard in Harlem uh, couldn't decipher what Kamala was trying to say. Can you understand what she's trying to say? No, you have to explain it more a bit. So how am I supposed to help? Tell me what she's trying to say. How the hell am I supposed to know? That might have been awesome. Yeah. Girl, it's gibberish. I'm not going to I don't even know what that even means. You Jewish? I am. Oh, wow. Mm. You married? I am not married. Oh, uh, you not? Mm. Are you dating? Uh, yeah. This is baby. <laughs> Army, uh, you're not supposed to use these Vox Pops to, to drum up personal business for your dating life. That's not the point. But uh, tell me about the, the experience there. Uh, what's the mood there? Are they going to back her regardless of the fact that she's a poor candidate because they hate Trump? Uh, are they energised about voting? Uh, what was the vibe in Harlem? No, no and no. Yeah. Uh, no, they're not energised. Uh, these people aren't stupid. They're not saying, hey, you're a black woman, therefore I should vote for you, okay? That's not the way this thing works. Uh, she's dropping the ball when it comes to the black community, and they know. It's why they're in panic mode. Uh, look, and I know what the, what the polling is saying on the black vote. They're gonna get, he's going to get the biggest vote uh, in, in the last 60 years. Uh, I think it might be bigger than that. I mean, anecdotally, when I go out to the black community talking about Trump and Harris, um, not only is there not excitement about her, um, I just hear a lot of people say we're going to vote for Trump. Like right now, the polling is saying 50% of black men, right, 25% of the entire uh, wow. uh, black population is going to is going to vote for um, for Trump. Uh, that's it's a massive number. Um, but I think, look, this idea, and I, you know, it's whole like every time you say, oh, word salad. This is not just white Republican men who say this thing, right? When I went out there and I and I, I I 
started this the premise of this video by saying, I'm going to read you a quote, and then you tell me who said it. They all jumped in at before I had a chance to even read the quote and go, Kamala Harris? Like, they knew where this was going. They understand that she is so vapid. And she just throws in a bunch of incongruous words, and, and, and hopefully people will think she's smart. She's covering up. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I and you and conservatives are not the only person who noticed this. Everyone does, including black people. Look, when I, when I do something, when I do a video, yes, it's funny. The, the, the comedy, the entertainment is just a delivery device for something more important. And what it's saying is they recognize what we have been saying in the conservative eco-universe, even though they don't listen to us, right? They're not really part of our eco-universe for the most part. They know what's going on because they're not dumb. Look, it is so gross how the Democratic Party takes uh, for granted the black vote. I think black people finally saying we're done being taken for granted. Well, I do worry about some of the advice she's getting because there are those who are telling her, look at the enormous audience Trump got with Joe Rogan. You should do Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan goes for three hours. They cover a wide range of topics over that time. If you were giving her oh, advice, please, would you don't, tell her to don't do go. Joe look. Rogan? I think it would be no, a disaster. No, please don't. No. no. Look, I, I would love for her to go on and implode, but you know what? I'm begging her. Don't do it. Look, I, 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 yes, I do not want you to win, and if you go on there, you'll destroy yourself, but please don't do it. It's going to be too painful for the entire country. I'm begging you. I'm giving you solid advice here. Do not do it. Do yourself a favor. You can't handle it. That is uh, solid advice indeed, Army Horowitz. Thank you for your time this evening. Always a pleasure.